Hi folks, welcome. Today we're gonna to be talking about section 4.4, .4, logarithmic functions from your textbook. Uh, and we're gonna start off with this question, what is a logarithm? So what is a logarithm? Uh, I'm gonna put up three examples here. I think that these are fairly straightforward. Um, 10 to the x equals 100, two to the x equals 32, and five to the x equals 125. And I think by looking at those, we can tell that for the first question, x is going to equal 2 because 10 squared is going to be 100. Uh, for the second question, x is going to be 5 because 2 to the fifth power is going to be 32. And for the third question, x is going to be 3 because 5 to the third power equals 125. But another way I could have asked those questions is using logs. So for the first question, I could have asked log base 10 of 100 equals x. And you would have gotten the same answer that x equals 2. For the second question, uh, I could have asked log base 5 of 125 equals x, and that would have given me that x equals 3. Same answer as above. And last but not least, log base 2 of 32 is equal to x would have given you the same answer that x is going to equal 5. All right, so a couple more examples here. Take a moment, think about what those might be. But I think that we'll get that. The first one is going to be x equals negative 2, all right? Because 10 to the negative 2 is really 1 over 10 squared, which gives us 100. Um, the same reasoning for the second one, 1 over 2 to the fifth is going to give me 132. And for the last one, special case, 5 to the 0 power is going to give us 1. And again, another way I could have written that is with logs. That log base 10 of 1 over 100 would equal x, and that would give you x equals negative 2. That log base 2 of 132 equals x, and that would give you x equals negative 5. And log base 5 of 1 equals x would have given you x equals 0. So what we have here is that a logarithm helps you find an unknown exponent. And so we can think about exponents having two different forms, the exponential form and the logarithmic form. In the exponential form, we have a to the y equals x. a is our base, y is the exponent. And when we write it in log form, we have log base a, same base, of x, the thing that we don't know, equals y, or the exponent. All right, so let's take some time and solve some log equations, all right? So we're gonna talk through two examples here. Example one, log base three of x plus four equals log base three of one minus x. Now, if you'll notice, both of these have a log, so a log over here, a log over here, and both of them have the same base. This one on the left has base 3. This one on the right has a base 3. So what we can say is that the thing that is being logged, x plus 4, is going to be equal to the other thing being logged, 1 minus x. And so we can write that as x plus 4 equals 1 minus x. We're going to solve for x here. We'll add the x to the left-hand side. We're going to subtract the 4 to the right-hand side. And then we're going to divide both sides by 2. And we'll get x equals negative 3 halves. So this is our solve for x stage. And then we should always check our answers here. And so we're just going to take what we had, plug it back in. So we're going to take our negative 3 over 2. We're going to put that in everywhere we see the x in the original question. And we're going to simplify, and we'll see that log base 3 of 5 over 2 equals log base 3 of 5 over 2. This checking your answers part is going to be super important when we talk about logs and exponents, because sometimes some of those answers won't work when we plug them back in. All right, so let's move on to the second example. Example 2. Example. So let's take a look at example 2 here. Log base 2 of x minus 5 equals 4. 
So this you'll notice only has one log on one side and there's no logs on the other side. When this is the case, what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite our, our work in exponential form. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the base 2, put it to the power of the number on the other side, so 2 to the 4, equals the thing being logged, x minus 5. That's rewriting it in exponential form. From there, you know that 2 to the 6, uh, 2 to the 4, sorry, equals 16. And so we can get 16 equals x minus 5. We'll add 5 to both sides. We'll get x equals 21, and this was our solving for x. Now again, as I said in the last slide, it's going to be super important for us to check our answer. So we're going to go ahead and plug that 21 back into the original problem for x. We'll get log base 2 of 21 minus 5 equals 4. And when we simplify that, we'll get log base 2 of 16 equals 4, which is correct because 2 to the 4th power equals 16. Don't forget to check your answers for the log examples. All right, so moving on to graphs and graph transformations of log functions. So exponential and logarithmic functions are inverse functions, meaning that they undo each other. So it's kind of like addition and subtraction are inverse functions, multiplication and division are inverse functions, squares and square roots are inverse functions, and exponentials and logs are also a pair of inverse functions. And so with our exponential functions, you'll have a function y equals b to the x or a to the x, and a special case of that is y equals e to the x, or that is our natural exponential function. Regardless, exponential functions look something like we have in this picture over to the right. They start kind of flat, and then they go up pretty quickly. In contrast, logarithmic functions can be written as y equals log base b of x, or y equals ln x. Now ln is actually the special case when I have a log but the base is an e. So ln x or natural log x is the inverse of e to the x. And this function actually has a vertical asymptote but it starts pretty steep and then it starts to flatten out. So, some important features of a log graph. It has a restricted domain. That means you only see pictures that are in the part that are greater than zero, or as we say, in interval notation from zero to infinity. It also has a vertical asymptote at x equals zero, meaning that if you imagine a line going right up and down on that y-axis, there's actually a vertical asymptote for this graph. And the last important feature is it has an x-intercept at the point 1 comma 0. We're going to talk about a few different types of transformations here. We can take these graphs, our exponentials and our logs, and we can move them vertically or we can move them horizontally. That means we don't change the shape but we just shift them up and down or side to side. So here's how you can tell from the graph, or rather the equation, whether it's going to be a vertical shift or a horizontal shift. So if you have something like this, y equals natural log of x plus d, so some number d, if you have a plus d at the end, it's going to move your function up. If you have a minus d, it's going to move your function down, but either way, it does not change the vertical asymptote. In contrast, when you have something that looks like this, y equals natural log of x plus c, and so like the x and the c are being naturally logged, if you have a plus c there, it's going to move your function to the left. And if you have a minus c, it's going to move your function to the right. So the horizontal one is the opposite of what you think it's going to be. Now this shift, the horizontal shift, does change your vertical asymptote. The other type of transformation we're going to talk about is reflection over axes. So we can 
have an equation that looks like this, y equals negative natural log of x. This would be considered a reflection over the x-axis, and it does not change the vertical asymptote. On the other side, haha, reflection. If we have y equals natural log of negative x, so that negative sign is with the x, that's going to give you a reflection over the y-axis. And this one does not change the vertical asymptote either. So now we're going to take a look at three examples where I'm just going to ask us to describe the graph transformations that are happening. If you have access to Desmos, D-E-S-M-O-S, -S, Desmos, um, you can graph these pictures as well just to kind of confirm for yourself that this is indeed what's happening, okay? So take some time, pull up Desmos on your computer or on your phone, and let's take a look at these graph transformations, all right? So example one. We have f of x equals log of x plus 100 minus 200. So when I look at this function, I know it's a log function because it's a log, but I notice that there's a plus 100, and that's inside the parentheses. And that plus 100 is like our c value. That's going to move our function to the left 100. This minus 200 that's on the outside is actually going to move our function down 200. And because we're moving it to the left 100, our vertical asymptote is going to move to x equals negative 100. Okay, so we've got, in summary, we've got the function moves to the left 100, down 200, and it has a VA or vertical asymptote at x equals negative 100. All right, second example. Let's say we have f of x equals negative log x plus 5. That negative sign in the front is going to reflect the function over the x-axis, and this plus 5 is going to move the function up. Now, neither of these transformations change my vertical asymptote, so my vertical asymptote is still going to be at x equals 0. All right, so again, the negative sign means you're reflecting over the x-axis. That plus 5 is going to move the function up 5, and the vertical asymptote does not change, so it will stay at x equals 0. All right, third example here. So f of x equals log of 3 minus x. Now this one we want to be super careful about because we actually have to do some work before we can figure out what the graph transformations are. So I'm going to take the inside, 3 minus x, and I'm going to switch the way I write it so it'll be negative x plus 3. And that plus 3 is because in front of that 3 there, there's secretly a plus sign. Okay, So I just switch the order. I have negative x plus 3. The other thing I have to remember to do here is I need to factor out that negative sign. So log of negative parentheses x minus 3. All right, so I want us to be really clear here that this minus sign is different from this plus sign. And it's different because when we distribute that minus sign back in, so minus x gives us this minus x, but then minus negative 3 will get us back to that plus 3. Okay, this is a really common mistake we don't want to make here. So now that we factored it, let's see what's happening. This minus sign means I'm going to reflect it not over the x-axis, but over the y-axis. This minus 3 means I'm going to move the function to the right 3. And because I'm moving the function to the right, it's also going to change the vertical asymptote. And so we've got a reflection over the y-axis, moving to the right 3, and a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. All right. Let's move on to some general logarithmic properties here. So general properties of logarithms. All right. We saw one of these earlier, this first one. Log base a of 1 equals 0. So why does that make sense? We want this to make sense for us, okay? We don't want to just memorize them. We want to make sure we understand the reasoning behind it. So it's kind of like that example we saw earlier where we had log base 5 of 1. 
and that equals zero. The reason for this is because any base to the power of zero is going to give us one. So then it makes sense that log base whatever of one equals zero. The second property, log base a of a equals one. Okay, now we can look at this illustration over here where we have log base 10 of 10 equals 1, or I could say log base 5 of 5 equals 1. But the reason why that works is because anything to the first power will give you the same thing. All right, third log property. We've got log base a and then of a to the x. All right, this question is really saying, the base, little a, to the power of the other side, x, is equal to this thing right here. And they wrote it really well here. a to the x equals a to the x. Now, we know that that is always true, meaning that if a and a are the same, then x and x have to be the same. And so we get log base a of a to the x equals x. And our last property, because exponentials and logs undo each other. Okay, so again, it goes back to that idea of inverses. When I have a raised to the power of log base a of x, I'm going to get x. Because this a and then the log base a cancel each other out, and we get x. All right. We've kind of seen these earlier in the PowerPoint. I just want to make sure we're clear on these. So there is something called a common logarithm, all right? And if you think about it, most people that you know probably have 10 fingers and 10 toes. We count in groups of 10 a lot. And so a lot of times when we're saying log base 10 of x, we actually don't even write it because it's so common. We just write log so whenever you don't see a number there, it really means there's a secret 10 there. And this is going to be true as long as x is greater than 0 because that's our restricted domain. Okay. There's another super uh, popular logarithm, and that is our natural logarithm. And that natural logarithm is whenever the base is not 10, but the base is e, we can just write ln x. And again, this is true in our restricted domain. And so this chart right here just shows us all the different properties that we just talked about, but specific to common logs and natural logs. All right, we're going to finish up this lesson with applications of logarithms. So we're going to talk through two examples about why logs are important for real world applications. Now, unlike a lot of real world applications that are not really in your world, um, I think logs and exponential functions actually really come into play for folks, okay? So let's take a look at this first example. If you put money, some amount of money, into a savings account with an interest rate of 4%, how long will it take your money to double? Okay, so we're going to assume here that whatever you put in, you don't take anything out, you don't add anything else, it's just the initial amount that you put in there is what stays in there. Okay, so if you think back to what you've learned about exponential functions and compounding continuously, there is a equation, an equation, a equals p e to the rt. Now, A stands for your annuity or how much you have in your account. P stands for the principal or the initial amount that you put into your bank account. E is a special number that helps us deal with our natural exponential function. And it's about 2.718. R stands for the rate, but we want to make sure we don't use just a 4. We want to make sure we change that into a percent. So we're going to need to put in 0 0.04. And then T is how long the time is. And so because I don't know how much I'm putting into the account, I'm going to put in my annuity as 2P or doubling my money. 
Okay, if I were tripling it, I wouldn't have a 2, I would have a 3. So 2p equals p times e to the 0.04t. And if I divide the p's away from both sides, I'll just get 2 equals e to the 0.04t. So I've got this t in my exponent, all right? So all I've done so far, I've substituted my known information into the equation. But again, I have my unknown variable in the exponent. How do I get it out of the exponent? I'm going to rewrite it in log form, okay? So log, what's my base? My base is e of 2, because that's the number on the other side, equals the exponent, or 0.04t. Now, from the previous slide, we know that log base e of 2 can be written as natural log 2, which is much shorter, a little bit cleaner, equals 0.04t. And then we can divide that 0.04 away to get t all by itself. And we'll get t equals 17.329 years. All right, so we can summarize that step as saying we solved for t. So this is a great example of how you can figure out maybe not just how much money you're going to have after a certain amount of time, but also thinking about um, things like loans. If you're going to take out a loan for a car or a mortgage on a house, how much how, or how long is it going to take you to pay off all of these loans? All right, you to clarify that. All right, thanks so much. Bye.